Hi guys, today we're going to be doing bubble painting. These are the supplies that you're going to need. You can use a variety of things for your color, either food coloring or any kind of paint. I've got acrylic paints here, you could use tempera paint. Food coloring is nice because it'll wash off your supplies well, and most people have it, but really anything will work that's colorful. Then you can get some cups to put your bubbles in, you're going to be making your bubbles in. Something disposable is nice just because it's not going to get stained. Uh, or you can get rid of it when you're done. And then you'll need some soap to help make the bubbles. Any kind of paper will work, but if you've got something that's a little thicker, like watercolor paper, that's a little better than just printer paper. But if that's what you got, that'll work. You'll need a straw to blow your bubbles. If you have disposable straws, those might be nice just because they won't get stained. Uh, but really any kind of straw is gonna work. You'll need some type of tray on the bottom. This is mostly just to protect your table or whatever surface you're working on. And if you want to protect your tray from getting stained, you can use plastic wrap or any kind of tin foil to layer it with. So my first step is going to be to line my tray. Mine's kind of big, so it might take two sheets. Put one on the bottom. And again, you can use foil or plastic wrap. Really anything will work for this. And another layer on top. And then from there you can set your pieces of paper in. You can fit more than one, you can do more than one. If it's a smaller tray, you might just do one at a time. All right, our next step is to make our bubble solution. So I've got my water cups filled up. The less water you have, the darker your colors will be. So I kind of like to have it a little lower in the cup. And if you have a smaller container as well, you'll have kind of darker colors. You'll put a little bit of dish soap into each container. It probably doesn't take very much. And then you can kind of stir that up with your straw. And then with each one, in each container, you can have as many containers as you want, you'll mix your colors. Remember, you want to stick with similar colors in similar containers, just so that way you won't get colors like brown when you start blowing your bubbles. So I might start with yellow and red, and then I can always add in other colors later to blend my bubbles. So I'll stir this up really well. And stir that to get it ready to go. Careful with your stir. So now we're gonna get started. We have two different kinds of paper. This one's a little bit thicker, kind of watercolors paper. And this one is a lighter, more flimsy type of paper. It's not quite printer paper, but it's a little bit lighter. So we'll see how this works on the two different types of paper. I found it works best to hold up your bubbles rather than leave them on the bottom, unless you want like little circles from your cups. And then to start to blow your bubbles above your picture. Once you have a good amount of bubbles formed, you can start to kind of push them into the section of the paper where you want them to go. And then you can change colors as well. Careful about gripping. I kind of like how the drips look, so I'm going to leave those there. You just want to kind of fill your page with all different shades of bubbles. The more colors you have, the more you could do this with. So if you have more containers, you can do more colors. And then once your page is kind of filled, you don't want to like continue to add bubbles. 
because the way it dries is kind of the key thing. So you can let it sit and let it dry for a while and then come back and do another layer of bubbles later. So I think we'll try and do that too. So set these aside and let it dry and then come back. One thing I found as I've played around with this, generally the less bubbles you have, the better it works or the more you see the bubble pattern. With this one, I did a ton of bubbles all at once and it kind of just like blended into a puddle, which is still a cool kind of background fade. But if you want to get like the distinct bubble shapes and patterns, it's a good idea to just do a few bubbles at a time. So just like, and then you can like place those little groups individually around your paper and you'll get a much more distinct bubble pattern.